All right, man, y'all already know the vibes. It's Sugar Hill Dita, and I'm with Cultura, with K Podcast. Y'all know the vibes. Tune in. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Cultura with K Podcast, where the Latin and hip-hop culture collide. I'm your host, the only Kayla, and today I have a very special guest in the building. He is coming all the way from New York City, so you know I'm excited because you know that's my hometown. Thank you so much for stopping by, Sugar Hill D-Dot. You already know the vibe, man. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for coming. Like I mentioned, you know, I'm from the Bronx, so I'm really happy to have you here with me today, and I'm just always happy talking to, you know, fellow New Yorkers. We are in Atlanta. Oh, uh, we are. Is it your first time? Yeah. It is? How long you been here? Four years. Wow. Yeah. So how is it for you over here? I love it. When I first moved here, I'm not going to lie, I was ready to go back to New York within like the first six months because I was like, one, I didn't have my license because it was like no point in having a license in New York. You take the bus, train, cab. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't have that out here. So I was like, that's a dub. <laughs> There's no bodegas. So I was like, horrible. And you just had to drive everywhere. Everything is far, right? Yeah, pretty much. Well, um, like I said, I'm really happy to have you here with me today. Even though, you know, you're 15, you're like an old soul. You're very wise. Where would you say that comes from? Uh, I would say mature for your work because uh, I'm like never chill around people that's younger than me. I always chill around grown folks I never, or never chill around young people that was younger than me. I always chill around people. And if I did chill around you... When you was younger than me, it was like a little fast thing, or you my, you gotta be my cousin, family. Yeah. So I could say like my mentality is a little bigger than some kids, fifteen year olds my age. Mm -hmm. you no, know? and I'm from, you know, Harlem. I'm from Sugar Hill. Yeah, that's around. That's like what one forty four to one fifty four. One forty. You see, you know your little. You know, you know, you just missing two blocks. No, you're actually right. You was actually right. So you are Dominican. Did you would you say you grew up in a traditional Dominican household? Yeah, I was. Yeah, kitchen. Grandma always in the kitchen. Pops. Yeah, I was always in the Spanish household for me. Always. Do you speak Spanish? Yeah. Would you ever consider doing uh, Spanish music or incorporating like some lyrics in Spanish? Yeah, I would do Spanish music for me. I would, I would. I feel like that would be really dope. Yeah. Especially if that, you were to like link up with another really, yeah. land artist. Yeah. I really like, uh, I listen to Spanish music. I like uh, Anuel, Eladio. Oh, wow. Yeah. I like Eladio, um, Sech. I like a lot of, I like a lot of um, Spanish rappers for me. Bad Bunny. For me, everybody loves Bad Bunny. Yeah. But for me, I for me, when I get in my Spanish, because I just, I'm, I'm around a Spanish family. That's all they listen to. So I'm forced, not I'm forced to listen to you. Yeah, they, but oh, they, it comes they, natural. Yeah, because they listen to it every day. So that makes you listen to it. So mm -hmm. for me, but those are the top four like that I listen to a lot. I listen to the Eladio a lot, though. Yeah, I like him a lot, too, and I will. So I have a segment called Three Shots In. Three Shots In. Okay. In. So I'm going to bring you, have my producer bring you the. You want to do it right yeah, here? Yeah. Okay. Three shots in. All right? You got three chances to make it in. All right? Do I get anything out of this? Yes. What? Okay. So, after you make your shots, right, I'm going to play again like a rapid fire segment. I'm going to ask you a bunch of really fast questions or whatever. However many you make in, you have the option to pass on my question. Let's say pass. Like, in other words, like, I'll plead the fifth. If you were looking, what, you thought you were going to win a pair of Mary's? Nah, nah. <laughs> probably son, probably son. All right, ready? All right, ready? Yeah, okay. I could go, I could go. I yeah, could you go. could go. I made it. One. Look. Oh, I missed that one. Okay, and then last one. I made one, though. You made one. Oh, that was, I missed two. You missed, you missed three, but you got one. So I get to pass my right, question. All right, you get to pass one of my questions. Or if you don't want to pass, you don't have to pass one. <laughs> but that's up to you, okay? okay? What motivates you? Or who motivates you? Uh, like rapper? Um, not just in general. Like, uh, what as in, like, it could be a thing. So you could say money motivates you. Say I, a new day motivates I don't even you. know, like, but it's just something about music. When I hear something, like, when I hear new rappers, 
when I hear like when a rapper drops a album, new so it's just something about the music that motivate me, bro. Like makes me makes me want to go more up. Just something about the music. I don't know, bro. Makes makes me get the chills. It's just something about the music, bro. Something about it, bro. That's good. Question number two: What is your biggest pet peeve? Something that irks you? Irks me. Irks me. Irks me. Oh. When somebody, can I do it? Yeah. When somebody does this to me. I hate that too. I hate that. Literally, I'm always like when yelling. Like they be like, yo, yo, My yo. brother does that and it I pisses me that. up. I'm like, can you stop touching me? I hate that. It makes me want to, you know, smack him real quick. <laughs> you know, I don't be trying to come out of character. Yeah, but like, why you doing that? Why you touching me? Yeah. Especially like that, mad fast. Yeah. And you poking me. I'm not, I got ears like, you know, you see I'm on my phone <laughs> touching me like this. No, like, hell no. That would bother me, too. Okay, next question. What makes you laugh the most? A show, a person? I don't know. Like, one, like, when I'm with my niggas, they just, like, mad talking stupid shit. Or when I'm, like, on Instagram reels watching mad dumb shit. <laughs> like, if a nigga busting his ass or some shit. <laughs> some shit like that. Just everything just be funny to me. I ain't gonna lie. No, okay. Who is the greatest rapper of all time? All right. It's greatest rapper of all time this year in this era. Well, in your opinion. All right. No, I'm picking three. Okay. This year, Little Dirk. All right. Mid, mid, all right. Uh, I'm young, too, y'all, so y'all cannot, I don't care what y'all say. I'm young. Uh, this is what I'm going to say. Like, this, I'm I'm going pick, to pick rappers that I know, you know? Lil Durk, Drake, I ain't gonna lie. That's a good one. Drake. And I ain't gonna lie, bro, I'm gonna have to give it 50 Cent, bro. No cap. Third one, 50 Cent. That's a good one. Those are really good. I think those are th three really good answers. All right, because look, I, I got like Dirk for like around this era. I got like Dirk around like this era. And then... You know, I got, like, Drake, you know, Drake. Like, you know, he's always been around. He always, like, always been, you know, yeah. lit. So I just put him. And then 50 always been 50. 50's always, oh, yeah. he's always been lit. So put him number number one. He's always been lit, even since back in the day. I'm glad you mentioned that. Like, I'm young, only because, like I mentioned, I had interviewed Didi Osama, and he said the greatest rapper of all time, in his opinion, was Lil Durk. And it went crazy. Crazy viral, and people were just like, "What, Lil Durk, Lil Durk?" A lot of people were saying, "Yeah, they agreed," bro, but I'm like, "You I understand? Agree. He's Lil Durk 16. Is pain, bro. Like, one, Lil Durk is fire, so like, I respect his opinion. But on top of that, I'm like, he's 16. Like, you can't expect him to say bigger Tupac when he wasn't even alive at that time. You get what I'm saying? The people that you grew up on are gonna be who you consider, you know, someone that you would say is the greatest of all time. So I feel I like ain't, I ain't gonna lie, I'm DD 16 and I'm 15. You feel me? But like something about I don't know I don't know if Didi be doing like his I don't know if Didi does his like research on artists like I don't know, like for me that's that's a twin for me, but I don't, I never ask him if he does research like on artists but like I know I do research on some of them, and like Fifty I do research O D research on He's him, good. but Smirk I'ma always say like best rapper I ain't gonna lie best rapper of all time this year game this year around like to like 28 bro i don't even know bro dirk had it for a minute yeah i ain't gonna lie bro best rapper of all time drake best rapper of all time 50 cent best rapper of all time i love those answers next question for people that don't know your music mm -hmm. which three of your songs should they listen to 3M and EMs, Let Her Go, and Make a Mess. They all just dropped uh, in the same two, three months, basically. They all just dropped, like, in four, same four months. Let Her Go, 3M and EMs, Make a Mess. Who is someone you see and are confused why they are famous? Remember, you have a, a lot of people, too. but I don't, I don't, a lot of people, but I'm not. I'm not into talking. I'm not into giving nobody clout. I'm not into talking about that. But a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people, What's people some probably feel that about that about me. For me. Nah, but you got talent though. There's people out here that are famous for nothing. I don't know. 
<laughs> okay, what's something that casual fans wouldn't know about the music industry? It's a busy organization. You gotta really know what you're doing for me. Busy. Make sure you get on places on time. Cause I'll I'll be I'll be late sometimes, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I'm sorry, I'll be late sometimes. But I got early this past week. I got early. Yeah, you were on time you today. You know, I was on time today too. You know, I've been early, you know. But don't make it late to your interviews, y'all. Yeah. What's the craziest thing you've ever done for a girl? Oh my god. Like, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, you know, New York, New York niggas, New York boys <laughs> don't like taking the train in New York, you know? Yeah. And, you know, a girl will try to make you take the train and shit. And all that shit. Uh, and you, she got you. She made you take the train. Yeah. And you did it. Yeah, but that bitch is dumb now. <laughs> wow. Well, the only thing she got to say is that she she got beat out to take the train. Uh, okay. Um, is there anyone in your DMs that you've left not read? <laughs> Damn, you gotta put me on high <laughs> like that. <laughs> Fuck it, nigga. Uh, yeah, of course. Like. I will be leaving my grandma on red a lot. <laughs> like, Why? Because, like, you know Dominican grandmas, bro. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. And then, you know, they call you, like, four times. You don't pick up. And, oh, tu no me llamaste. Da -da -da. You didn't call me. Why you yeah. not calling? Why you not calling? That's probably somebody I leave on red a lot. Even though <laughs> I love her so much, she I leave her on red so a lot because it's like, that's somebody who blows my phone up more like, than the fans, bro. Yeah, but like Diablo. And the fans blow my phone up a lot. So imagine my grandma. Like, you know? <laughs> That's hilarious. But I love you. Does I she ever, like, send you memes online? Like, you know, or, like, uh, funny Yo, videos? Yes, bro. She literally, I was going through her camera roll one time. Like, she does my braids for me. So I was going through her camera roll one time on her phone. And li this literally... This woman literally watches interviews with me on the big TV that we got. And Aww. she just takes photos of them on her phone Aww. and shit. And shit. Or, or, like, she'll see shit on her phone of me having shows and stuff. Or me having shows. And then, you know, like, she'll just smile and stuff. She wanted to go to one of my shows one time. But, you know me. Yeah. I'm not protect her. Out. Yeah, you know, I'm not, you know. Gotta yeah, of think, course. Got to think bigger. Family first. Yeah. Okay, last question. What is the most sus bar You've ever heard? Sus. 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 Yeah, like. Ugh. I ain't gonna lie. My A and R Sarah, she know the vibes. I love you, all right. But she know who sent me an open and said some weird shit. <laughs> and I was like, that's a dub. That's a dub. We ain't doing nothing. It's a dub. She know. Okay, you don't have to say who the artist is. I'm what not, was, I'm not, what I'll was, put, I'll put people on the spot like what that. What was the I'm bar, though? I'm a person. I'm not, you want me, to, you want me, to, say the, you want me yeah. to say the bar? You don't have to say who the artist is, but what was the bar? Because you already said it's a dub. He said, nah, I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to do that in, Why? Bro. We don't know gonna, who it is. I ain't going to do that in, because he's bro. He's bro for okay. me. He's bro from the label. I ain't going to do that in, bro. But Sarah, you know. Okay, it was sus in what way, though? You don't have to say it. It was just like, he was just talking about some weird stuff. Nah, it was just like in the start of the song, and then you like said some weird shit, and I was like, oh, nah, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was like some quick shit, bro. Yeah. Like, but it wasn't like on some weird, weird, weird shit. It was yeah, just it was like just weird. like weird. Like, what the fuck? That th like threw you off guard. <laughs> yeah, but Sarah, you know. I feel like we're seeing this wave of young rappers, young drill rappers, young New York drill rappers. I feel like you guys are responsible for putting New York back on the map. So I feel like it's amazing to see, um, to see all of your success. But also, just like when you look, when you obviously you don't have like a resume, right? But like mm -hmm. when you do your your career resume, you know those are things that you can add to it. Yeah. And I know you just um, also uh, uh, recently opened up for Lil Durk mm -hmm. over the weekend. What was that experience like? Mm, that's Broski right there, <laughs> Dirk, Dirk. That's actually Broski, and that's one of the rappers that I look up to a lot. I mean, locked in and shit for me. For me, shit was good. Good show sold out the United Center. For me. It was, it was amazing for me. Thousands of people there, good feeling, like always. Just like last show, it was sold out too mm -hmm. for me. You know, 
every Dirk show sold out. Yeah. Me. And to do that with your friend Didi at uh, Osama, I think it was probably really cool too. Yeah, my son uh, Didi was there too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we was we was performing together all that. We had the we had the um we had the crowd going crazy. I ain't gonna lie. So since you represent New York drill, drill mm -hmm. you know drill rap, and you said Lil Durk is someone that you look up to, and he represents Chicago drill rap. Mm -hmm. How would you say New York separates itself from the drill scene? Sound, you know, like sound wise and just uh, you know, making been, a name for themselves. I've been, I've been um, switching up my sound lately. I, that's why I was gonna tell you about it. I haven't been labeling myself as a drill artist lately. Okay. You know, so I've been really finding like what I've been really finding out and really learning and doing my homework with this music stuff. And I'm really finding I was really an artist, like a real actual artist. You know, I'm really becoming a real actual artist because of the music I'm making. It's melodic, different type of rap, rap, not just drill, like real rap, like for me, like, and it's a lot for me. That's why I can't wait to drop for me and show my fans what's out there. The new, the, I always, like, post this little, like, I can't show, I can't wait to show y'all the new me for me. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different songs that I want to show my fans. Because a couple months ago, I was just drill rapping for me. And now, that's why I started doing different music, and now I don't label myself as a drill rapper. I think that's awesome, and I think also that speaks to how you're going to solidify yourself as an artist and create longevity, right? Because we've seen other rappers in the past that like had the same cadence and the same flow on every single record, and it works for them for a period of time. But, but after a while, people get tired of people it. Get tired you know of it. So I love that you that you mentioned that you're gonna switch it up for your fans. You're gonna go more into like the melodic. Um, hit more of the rap, you know, the the bars, freestyles, all that. Because, so because even though I don't want to label myself as a drill artist, I'm going to still be a drill artist for the rest of my life forever because that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. For me, that's why my fans love me because I became, I came in the game as a drill artist, you understand? So selling out shows, doing everything as a drill artist. In addition to, you know, um, opening up for Lil Durk and having that experience, what was it like getting a Drake co-sign? Uh yeah, Drake Broski too for me. Cause Drake, I'm a big Drake fan. <laughs> like that is my dream interview. So I was like, oh my god, you got Drake on. Uh, he have a tour. Why you ain't go to one of his shows? He's coming in September. Oh, so you? But I want to interview. I want to sit down and interview with Drake. So, my best advice. He's and I not, DM'd him already. My he didn't best see my advice, DM. um, bro, it's, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. For me, that's that's. It's not, it's not, yeah. you know, it's, it's a lot of busy. Yeah, I know. Me, <laughs> it's my, best, my best decision for you is he's not a weird person. He's actually a good guy yeah. for me. So, like, if you go to his shows and, like, for me, if you get to VIP, go to his room and talk to him, and, you, like, I, he's a good person, bro. He's actually he's fucking cool as fuck, bro. No cap. He will probably, like, I don't even want to say probably he might just do it because of how cool he is. Like, and you cool, too, and you're a good genuine person and he's a genuine person too like no caps he m might just do it bro I ain't gonna cap the problem is I have to get backstage <laughs> that get is backstage. a big problem that's a big problem you gotta be locked in with some yeah. of those folks you gotta yeah. be locked in I I, I don't know I try, I try no I know but how how was it getting a Drake co-sign uh, especially like so early on in your career like I said he's a good person bro he's genuine as fuck when he saw me gave me a big ass fucking hug like started smiling and shit like then we was just having fun at the bowling alley, talk, talking and shit, chopping it up. For me, everything was just good vibes. Everything, everything was good vibes and good energy. Party, um, bowling alley. For me, and then next day, uh, next day, uh, my son um, invited me to um, to play basketball with him. He loves uh, to play basketball. Right? Yeah, I play basketball with him. Uh, Did you at smoke the, him? Uh, nah, I really, I went over there, you know, looking a little nice, so I didn't really <laughs> want to mess myself up, but he he invited us to the Miami Heat Center um, to play basketball with him yeah. and shit, and I was, again, I was chopping it up with him, saw us, for me, shooting around with him, but he was really playing a game, I was, you know, I was working, I had good shorts on, you know, it was hot in Miami, but I, I had white ups on my feet, <laughs> you know, I was shooting, 
But I was just shooting the ball. I wasn't trying to really play nobody. But me and him, we was just talking to each other and shit, playing, you know, shooting around and shit. He told me to pull up over there, too. I would love to see a Drake and uh, Shake Healthy that feature. Man, I hope, man, I hope, man. That's the goal right there, too, man. I hope I get one of those. So, because I had mentioned, right, that I am a big Drake fan, I have literally created an entire segment for this podcast around Drake. So, I have a segment called 6 p.m. in New York, okay? Because, you know, that's one of the titles of his songs. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to ask you just, like, uh, six rapid-fire questions, and they're based on one of his song titles or an album, okay? So, the first question is, Time Flies. Now, that's a song of his. Now, my question is, what's one memory you would love to relive? One memory I would love. It's a hard question, right? Yeah, because it's like, build, build my, build my, build my God, man. Son, Nadi, man. Build my God. My son, Edot. Guys, I lost. Those, that's the time I would want to um, go back to. Like, if I had a time machine, I'll go back to those times to be like with Nadi. Eat out. I mean, those times I'll like go back to. I want to go back to. That's a great memory. Next question Hotline Blink. Who is the most famous contact in your phone? Uh, Lil Dirk. More M's. What is the biggest purchase you've made so far? Uh, I like, I, my favorite brand is a Mary. So probably just in a Mary and one day just in a Mary I probably drop like 10,000. Just just like 10,000 on a Mary alone. Like just probably just a Mary like going to the Mary store and dropping like 10 bands for me at the Mary store. Like for me if I'm going big every time it's like 10 bands, 14 bands. That's the most I ever wasted 10 14 bands like 10 14 bands. But when I go to a Mary on a daily it's always 5,000 on the top. Always, Damn. always. That's a lot of money. Always five thousand. <laughs> and I, all I wear is a Mary. I don't really all Dior. A so Mary head to toe, baby. Yeah, all I wear is a Mary. So that's all. So I Mary, know. hit him up. Next question, hype. What's one song that gets you in the mood to either come out or stay on stage or to put you in a good mood? Chief Keith, Fanito. That's a good one. So that you put that on to get you hype, like right before you about to get on stage. Mm-hmm. I go out on that on stage. When I'm, I play that to go out. I play that to go out. That's good. Next question. Hours in silence. Where do you feel most at peace? Is there a place? Uh, my game room. Your game room? Mm-hmm. What's your game of choice? Uh, my PC. I play my PC. Um, okay. Fortnite sometimes, GTA. Okay, so that's where you feel most at peace. It's like I just be playing, nobody bother me. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, next question, way too sexy. Who is your celebrity crush? Do I have one or can I pick like three? You like, could give me top three. Top three, like I like Hennessy, Cardi B <laughs> sister. I'm one. taking yes, I know that down. That I'm smashing that. <laughs> Ruby Rose, Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose is fire. She's going down with me too. Uh, um, I forgot it was one more. It was one more. I forgot who I said. But I ain't going to hold this up for right now. Right now, just Ruby Rose and Hennessy right now. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. Ruby Rose, I know I'm young, but I'm coming for you, bro. You know I think she lives in Atlanta, right? And I'm in Atlanta. I'm coming for you. Well, you got to slide in those DMs. <laughs> Be like, what's up? I'm in your city, baby. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> Um, okay, so Ruby, I'm playing, baby, but you do look good, though. I'm playing. I'm just playing, but you do look good, though. I'm playing. She does. She's beautiful, and Hennessy's bad as hell too. Yeah, Hennessy's I feel like I feel like bad. those are really great choices. But Ruby, I'm playing, but he's bad. He's playing, but he's not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm dead ass. So, um, going back to the music, um, I want to talk about your record with Lil Tyler. Mm-hmm. What was that like working with him? Now that's Broski. Uh, uh, I told him for me get on this track. For me, it's going to be crazy. For me, send the open. He did what he had to do. And it was crazy. And and, and, and you know why it's crazy? Because Tyler's from Florida. Mm-hmm. So it's like my my song is like a Jersey Club beat. Like, you know, one of those beats that's... So people wasn't really expecting Tyler to, you know? Yeah. My son. So when they heard Tyler on that beat, everybody was like, oh, nah. 
like it's something different because he never did that shit before. So mm-hmm. me, I told my my son did that, and and it was hard for him too. Like it was hard for him to make it or too for me because he never did it before. Yeah. So, for me, but my son from Florida, he did for me one yeah. of my beats from New York. So. Yeah, I really like his music too. I feel like that was the collab that like we didn't know we needed, but it turned out so good. Like you and Lil Tyler. He said, "I don't know if I need Jada Wade or Ruby Rose." Damn, he's coming for your girl. No, I'm going for Ruby Rose. <laughs> he be holler. Hey, That's, both of them, both of them are in Atlanta. I don't give a fuck who likes Ruby Rose, bro. Everybody like Ruby Rose. It, it, it just who could get to her. I'm not, I'm not feeling it. No, she just look good. I'm not feeling <laughs> it for. Her. She just look good. <laughs> So I'm not feeding. I'm not sweating you. I just yeah. want you to know you look good. Yeah, That's yeah. it. I just want you to know you. You know. I just want you to know. You know. That I, I said. You know. You know. What's up? Pull up. <laughs> um, who is someone that you haven't worked with yet that you would love to work with? I'm sure there's a lot of people, but you've also worked with a lot of great artists as well. Uh. Damn. My favorite. Like I. I always want to work with Drake. I always want to work with Drake. No cap, like, and two C, two C. I'm locked in with him too. Two C, that's that's Broski, but I want to get a song with him too. A uh, little Dirk, like that's Broski too, but I like I want to get a song with him. Money bag, yo, I'll get a song with him too. Uh, like those are my top four. I ain't gonna lie. I I think I would also love to see you on a record with Anwell or Eladio. Yeah. Because they're like those two. real spitters. Those two. I feel like that I would I want to do a song with those two. No cap. Those two right there. I'll, that I, like, I will try my best in the Spanish gang. Mm-hmm. They'll send me an open right now. Eladio, send me <laughs> an open right now. I'm gangster. I'm trying my best. Because, you know, it's hard with the Spanish when yeah. you, for me, when you rap in English. But I still got to try. But I think it's possible. I yeah. think you guys will kill it for sure. How is it, because you're 15, so mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine, right, being 15, being super lit, being fly, married out, got money, famous. How is it, I mean, dating, I mean, I don't know if you date, but like just, <laughs> you know, trying to, no, to date like out dating. there or I like, like trying to find the right person to make sure they're not just with no, you for what I you got. I don't like dating. That's the problem. What you just said right there, like, and it's not even... A girl would just go with you because you got, but I don't like dating for me. Um, I don't like dating for me. I, I don't like dating. I already been through that. Don't want to go through that. For me, I don't like dating. I'd rather just stick to myself. For me, like oh, so I like for that. Me, I'd rather just stick to myself. So, no, not really a relationship type of, type of guy no more. I'm going to just stick to myself. And a lot of women nowadays are really, really, really devious, bro. And just, and I'm not speaking for every woman, bro. I'm speaking for women, just for the women that are devious. For me, for the men out there that got what I got. For for the men out there that got money, don't even got to have jewelry. For the men out there that got anything, bro. Like, a woman will try to, like, set you up or do anything anything weird bro that's why I, I don't trust women and then like a woman will try to play with your feelings too you mm-hmm. know like like in the relationships you will make it start stressing now and all that like that's just mad mad stuff so for me that's why i just stick to myself that's why the best advice is to just get money I, that's why i just get money how are you adapting or should i say like adjusting to being famous at such a young age, was it hard for you when? No, nah, it's you. I'm, it like, I'm used to it already. Used to it already. Like the famousness, I'm used to it. I already know how to move. I already know how to do what I gotta do. I'm used to it. So, low key regular for me now. But yeah. like when I first started, like you said, sorry for interrupting you. But like when I first started, it was fucking crazy, my nigga. Fucking fans chasing me. <laughs> fucking. Everything crazy, fans putting up on me, fans fans fighting in the shows, all that is just crazy. And it's like, yo, bro, they doing that all just for us, bro. And it's like, it's crazy. Like, when a fan to see me, they start losing their mind or some <laughs> shit. Like, oh, start, oh, my God, D-Dot, yo. That, and I'll just be like, 
no, oh, you gotta play it cool. But sometimes you have them days when you don't wanna say what's up to a fan, you know. But yeah. like I said, I'm a role model. I'm a role model for me. So I can never do that to a fan. I can never be like, nah, I don't wanna take a picture with you right now, bro. Cause how's that person gonna go home feeling? Yeah. For me, like, yo, fuck D Dot, bro. I'm not gonna take, I'm never gonna listen to his music again. He just dubbed me my picture. Bro, nah, bro. You always gotta think about how they gonna feel for me. So even if you're feeling bad, even if you're feeling bad, you still gotta take the picture with them because you don't know how they gonna feel when they go home. They gonna That's probably true. go off crying to their mom. Anything could happen, feel me? That's why you always gotta make a kid feel good, feel me? That's, that's, that's why I just try to do. As fans, we sometimes forget that obviously our favorite artists are humans. And then at the same time, like you mentioned, you know, you sometimes, sometimes you don't wanna take a picture. Bro, even me, bro, like I can't blame the fans, bro. When I was a kid, uh, when I was a kid, bro, yo, bro, I remember this time, right? I was, I ran into Fat Joe. Oh, I love Fat Joe. No, I haven't you, met him yet. I ran into Fat Joe when I was like 10, 11, and I know I'm capping. When I was like probably nine, bro, 10, nine, probably eight, I don't even know. And I was outside like 12, 12 in the morning, probably one in the morning. And I was outside walking through Washington Heights, and I think he owns a store up there. It's called something oh, yes. booty, something with the with a bulldog. He has like a secret store, right? Like or something, something like a clothing there. store. Yeah. And I was walking past and I saw him. And I was like, oh shit, Fat Joe. Feel me? And he was like, what you doing outside right now, little man? What you doing outside right now, little man? Go home. I was like, can I take a picture? He was like, of course, but what you doing outside right now, little man? Feel me? He told me go home. Just went home after that. I was just happy I saw Fat Joe and shit. And shit was crazy. That's That's- just, I was just mad young. That's awesome. I, I, I really like Fat Joe, too, because I'm from the Bronx, so I grew up on Fat Joe. I haven't met him yet. But I think that was dope that not only did he get, take, not only did he give you a picture, right? He took a picture with you, but he also gave you some really good advice. Like, yo, you young, go home, nothing for you out here. And I think that's dope. You also mentioned that you're a role model. How are you being a role model to the, to the, like, the generation of kids your age? Uh, it's because... Cause like I know I got a lot of people look looking up to me like and I got a lot of people watching me mm-hmm. for me and I be you always as a regular human being you always gonna go through stuff for me but you can never let your emotions show for me because you a role model and I got little sisters too for me all that mm-hmm. and if I'm down what you think how you think they gonna be yeah. they, for me how you think they gonna act if they see me down for me yeah. how you think my fans gonna act if they see me down. For me, it's a role model thing. For me, I know I'm a role model. That's why I always got to make sure I'm good on, on them cameras, make sure I'm always good, make sure I'm always good around them fans, make sure little sisters is always, for me, because for me, just always got to, just a role model thing, bro. You can can never sh- you can never show weakness in this. For me, you can never. So I saw one of your interviews, you had mentioned that you kind of got into rap and like writing music um, because it was like a form of therapy for you, right? What were some of the things that you were going through during that time that made you want to kind of like escape and write that down? Nah, just like anything, anything of regular, anything in life, you Mm -hmm. understand? Like, so not just me writing my own music, my therapy would just be music by itself. Like, you know, listening to music, that would be one of my therapies. Like, I'll just listen to music, make me chill, make me just, for me, make me not overthink about a lot of stuff. But for me, regular stuff that a boy will go through, bro, as in the hood, yeah. bro, you know, for mm-hmm. me. So just had to start my, my life started getting better when, with this rapping and stuff. For me, mm-hmm. everything started changing for me, you know, and then got famous, and then it's been up from there. So you mentioned that your grandma supported you, right? Both your grandmas, right? You said you would, they would give you forty dollars to go to the studio. Um, when you told them that you wanted to start rapping, did they like take you serious? They were like, okay, or did they just say, you know what, I'm gonna just give him some money to go to the studio so he can stay out of trouble? It wasn't like a thing that I told him, like, oh, my mom, I'm gonna start rapping. It was mm-hmm. just like a right, like a thing, like, oh, just give me money for the studio, yeah, and I'll just go to the studio, but like. They really realized I was a rapper, rapper when I got famous. Mm-hmm. Like when they'll see me on the TV, <laughs> that's when, that's when you know, that's when they realized. What do they say now? They must be so proud of you. I always saw that snippet by Meek Mill. Mm-hmm. For me, something, something about moving your grandma out the hood. Yeah. Did that for me. So 
just proud of myself because of that. So me, my grandma, I know she proud of me, cause, yeah. cause like, you know, you know, like when you, you know, a boy from the hood, and like you know, when you come in the house, like you know, like they just talk shit and yeah. shit, <laughs> like, but like they they just talk shit because they care about you. It's not cause they, but then like, you know, there's a difference. Like when you start doing good, they start. Like you feel me? When they mm-hmm. start doing good, they start showing you. For me, you understand? They start just, trusting you. Yeah, yeah they like, start trusting. Right, you know. Like that's just any Dominican grandmother. Right. Like you would know. I feel me. I can't really explain it because it's hard no, at I the moment. It. Like you know, because no, it's mm-hmm. hard. But you understand? I get it. I'm Puerto Rican. For those, for those who understand, y'all yeah, know too. Now I know that even though you've been in the game for a few years, you are signed. You're signed to Priority Records, which falls under <sighs> Capitol Records. Tell me, what was that like getting signed so early on in your career, and what made you want to to go with them? Orlando, that's like he pulled up on me. For me, he pulled up on me. It's all about good vibes and energy. For mm-hmm. me, all about good vibes, good energy. For me, everything everything is not just about for me just a label. And that's this is not all about. It's about good vibes, good energy. Who you feel comfortable with, you know, feel comfortable with them and not. Did what I had to do, you know. Were there other labels that were reaching out to you at that time as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. I'm a superstar. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't they? <laughs> no, I think that's good that you signed with with them because um, Orlando's a good dude, and he also has like a very great history of discovering some of the biggest names today. That's um, Broski. Broski. So I'm, I think that he got to you at a perfect time, and that you guys are gonna do a, a lot together. That's Broski right there. He he. That's Broski right there. He know, he know the vibes. Mm-hmm. He know, it's my heart right there. I have another segment for us to play. <laughs> okay, you ready? Um, this is the nice for what segment. Like I said, you know I love Drake, so my segment. What's that say? Nice for what? No, it's the question okay. right here. Nice for what segment? Okay. So the first question is, what is the meanest DM you've ever received? Have you ever looked at your DM and got a mean DM? Because, you know, some of these fans and fake fans be kind of, you know, ruthless sometimes. On Instagram? Yeah, like on Instagram. I don't look at my DMs. I'm, you don't? Bro, I don't really care about, I don't really care about Instagram. Like, I don't, <laughs> really, I don't really be looking at, like, requests who want to text me and stuff. I don't be looking at that. So, okay, nobody so you, texting me no crazy shit. Nobody and if they did, me. you probably wouldn't know. No, it wouldn't matter. Yeah, I wouldn't care. I got more money than them. Period. All right, next question. What is the pettiest reason why you had to cut someone off? It's not even because of petty. It's just, it's not even just because of petty. Like, when you got to cut somebody off, you got to cut, cut, cut somebody off. Like, mm-hmm. you're going you gonna to grow regardless, and you're going to keep on going up, and you're going to keep on being you. You can't let the next person stop your growth, and you're going to have to let some people go. Some people are going to have to come with you. You're going to meet some new people on the way, and that's just how it's going to be. Can't let, you can't let nobody stop your growth spurt, though. Yeah, that's good. Some good advice. Next question. What's something a fan told you that hurt your feelings, if that's ever happened? Has a fan ever come up to you and said something that kind of hurt your feelings or that made you look like, what the hell you just said? Nah. Like, nah, they generally love you. Like, sometimes, like, the fans, like, would just come up to me and be like, oh, you tall. I don't think, I didn't <laughs> think you were tall. <laughs> like, that's what they would just say. They will be like, he's tall. Yeah. That's what they'll just that's they don't really say nothing though. Or not, they'll just like, you know, you know, regular fan stuff. Yeah. Just, you know. And last question, did you ever have to give someone tough love? And if so, what did what what advice did you have to give them? You ever had to sit like one of your friends down, or maybe it was a family member or just someone you that you had to give tough sit love. That one person down, like just to talk to them. And you know, it's always gonna be that one person to sit you down to mm-hmm. talk to you, you know, and go both ways. But you know, it's always that one person you always have. You got that bond with that you trust, yeah. and you just talk to them, or that one person that you talk to them to make them feel right, or like that one person you talk to, like to see what's going on with them. And there's always gonna be that one person that you trust that's gonna come up to you and see how you're doing. For right. Me. So it just go both ways, I think, in the book. For me. Mhm. So I know that you going back to music. I know you just dropped the freestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, what was what was that like creating that? Nah, regular. Make a mess. Made a mess in the studio. Then I had to drop it later. 
I know. saw you. You um, you shot in New York, right? Was that in? Was uh, that yeah, like? That was in the block. That was on that my was, block. Is it ever hard going back to the block now, or do you still go find yourself going back often? Because you're super famous it's now. My hood. I'm from the hood. That shit different when you get it out the mud. But yeah, that was my son. Um, Dirk said that in his song, but always go back to the hood. For me, I could never. Could, it's my hometown. For me, I'm a Harlem baby. I can never stop going back. That's my it's hometown. But you know, you know, you know, like you always go. That's that's hometown. You always mm-hmm. gonna have to go back over there. You know. What's it like going back now? Cause I mean, everyone saw you grow up, right? They saw you turn into this big superstar. So I could imagine going back. What that's like? You know, everyone's rushing to take I a mean, picture to I talk don't really to you. Know. Like back then, I don't really know. I can't really talk for a lot of people. I'm glad I'm the way I am now because a lot, because just, you know, just a couple years ago, I was that boy in the block, you know, young boy in the block. For me, just outside and nobody, everybody just saw me as a young boy in the block. And now, for me, I'm D-Dot. For me, certain niggas saw me as the young boy in the block and certain niggas, it's my heart. For me, it's like for me, my gang was always my gang always was with me. But I'm talking about like the hood in general, like like the hood. Like my gang always was with me for me. But I'm talking about the hood for me. Always. It's always know? love. It's always damn. I, I don't I don't I don't I don't know how to explain it. Like I was just a boy from the hood but mm-hmm. now I'm D dot. So some niggas for me, was just looking at me as the boy from the hood, but now I'm D-Dot. So, yeah, you so know. now they're forced to see you as D-Dot. Yeah, now they're forced to see me yeah. as D-Dot, but my niggas that was with me before yeah. still with me, for me, so. Yeah, but I'm sure that's still a great feeling to, like, be there and to still go back and to see, you know, it's everyone always, and stuff. Like, it's always that feeling, like, when you go back to the hood, but you just... Yeah. It's just in the you hood. You pick and choose when shit. you want to go back to the hood, yeah. because I still go back to my hood. Um, so I be picking and choosing, like... To me, it's boring, because it's just nothing... I don't I don't no. like I don't like going to New York. There is no business for me out there. I like staying in my crib, chilling. Mm-hmm. For me ain't nothing ain't nothing for me outside. For me if there's no business on money. For yep. me, if there's no business on money, I don't wanna fuck No reason for you to be outside. Yeah. I always say, don't check for me unless you got to check for me. Exactly. Period. So. Well, thank you so much, Sugar Hill D. for stopping by. God it was a pleasure. Me. I'm so happy to see a young Latino New Yorker on the top. And I cannot wait for everything you got coming up. Tell everybody where they can find you on Instagram and thank you what, so you have, much. what you have out right now and what they can look forward to. 2023 music coming out. Album, mixtape, EP, <laughs> what you dropping? Yeah, I already know, but I can't tell y'all when it's dropping for me. But got something, got something, something big for y'all this year. Something big for those who pay attention. Y'all already know it drops. It's Sugar Hill D Dot, your favorite person, you know. Buzz down, and we here. See y'all next time. Y'all can find me on Instagram. For those who know, y'all already know where to find me. But we in ATL, so for those ATL, you know. Sugar Hill D-Dot, everything Sugar Hill D-Dot. And you don't even got to just search up D-Dot. It's going to work.